Hi again, guys. Um, so, how do you get long flight time uh, multi rotors? Well, the question is you've got to ask yourself what do you want to do with it? Okay. Uh, do you want it to fly around for a long time uh, because you want to do FPV, you want to do long range FPV, uh, which is what I want to do, um, or do you just want it to fly? Uh, for a longer period of time because you just want to have more fun with it and that's something to consider because um, you, you know you can fly for about 20 minutes um, and then you know your concentration levels might go down uh, probably before that um, you know you might want to actually just stop uh, or you you might say well if I can make it last for 30 minutes I can run it for 15 minutes take a break do something else and take that battery and use it again and run it for another 15 minutes um, so one battery is going to last you uh, for two flights or 15 minutes each. Um, so that, that'll be great. I mean, if you can get an hour, then it's obviously more and more and more. Um, one thing to consider if you are doing it like that is that the lower the voltage gets, the power is going to drop, and towards the last flight, uh, it's uh, going to be significantly less uh, power. Uh, so if you're going to do um, much more acrobatic type maneuvers, then I wouldn't recommend doing that towards the end of the battery capacity. Um, even towards that end of 70 to 80 uh, percent, I can usually tell the difference uh, on power. I'm sure most people can as well. So what do you do? Um, how do you get that longer flight time? Because at the moment, most quads, uh, most um, most any multi rotors uh, will last you. Um, you know, a lot of people say, "Yeah, we'll get hours up to 20 minutes." Uh, most of those designs that I've seen, at the most, you'll get about 14 minutes, and that's with a very very large battery pack. Um, so you're talking about something like 10,000 milliamp and up, um, which will give you. Um, you know, 20 minutes, uh, 15 minutes, 14 minutes, or whatever it is, and then you're talking about much, uh, probably the larger quads uh, or multi rotors again. So again, how do you how do you do how do you get the that long longer run time maybe on a smaller battery pack? Okay. Um, well, it starts with a lot of things. Okay. First, you you got to ask yourself again, like I said, what do you want to do with it? If you just want to flood around and have a camera gimbal on it, like I've got in the one. Uh, over here, um, this is a quadcopter. It's got a, a GoPro two-axis uh, camera gimbal, um, and sometimes I'd like to do longer flights uh, so that I can uh, take uh, longer footage, uh, un uninterrupted footage. All right, which means it could mean less editing or just makes it a lot easier. All right, so that that's something to consider because now you may need um, a slightly larger quad uh, or multi rotor that can handle the weight of a um, camera gimbal. Now, when it comes to the GoPros, they're not very heavy, so that's not uh, the big thing. Um, but your batteries may be okay. So, like I said, if I wanted the longer runtime, then it's going to be larger battery or more batteries. Uh, so it's got to lift that. Now, if you're using a DSLR camera or like a, something like a um, SLR camera, like a Sony NEX5, those become bigger, and so do the camera gimbals. And then once you start moving to uh, three-axis um, stabilization, then those gimbals become even heavier. Um, so you need more power, but that more power is not necessarily going to give you more run time. It's just going to give you more lift, so that uh, you can carry a larger load. Okay, so that's another thing to consider. Um, and I'm going to start by saying that your runtime is going to be proportional to the amount of money that you're willing to spend into your setup. Now, some, some people are like, "No, but I can get a cheap setup to run for you know 12 minutes, which is what I need." And that may be true, but if you want more than 12 minutes, and what I found, anything above 12 minutes. That's where it really gets, uh, where, where the priciness becomes important. And why? Well, let's start with the propellers for one. Now, this isn't a multi rotor propeller, but it's a plastic uh, propeller which I just wanted to uh, use for demonstration purposes. This is one of the cheaper plastic ones, and you can see it's got a lot of flex in it. Now, the propellers that I have sitting on my quad over here are carbon fiber, okay, which have almost no flex. Now, even with carbon fiber, there's different grades, there's different qualities, okay? Uh, at the moment, Foxtech um, have 
I think, the best quality ones, but they're also the most expensive ones. The question is, do, do you need that? Okay. Now, for the heavier quads, yes, you do. You actually do need uh, carbon fiber uh, propellers. Now, I do not have the ones from Foxtech on this quad, uh, but these are good quality ones. They're not the cheaper ones. Cheaper ones work too. But you, instead of those ones, I would go with something that's slightly cheaper than that, and those are the carbon reinforced or the fiberglass reinforced plastic propellers. Those are also very, very sturdy. I don't have one now to demonstrate, but they're also very sturdy, and I use them um, on a lot of my uh, multi rotors as well. So that's also something to consider. I can tell you if you're carrying higher loads, well, basically uh, lower KV motors larger propellers, you're not going to be able to get away with this, okay? 10-inch uh, propellers, uh, maybe even 12-inch, but I think that's pushing it. You can get away with these uh, with these ones that uh, have a bit of flex. Um, anything bigger, it's going to have too much flex, and it's just not going to work. Even on the smaller, uh, well, on smaller multi rotors, you're not going to really use the, the bigger ones, but yeah. So that's the propellers. Now let's talk about the powertrain. You've got your motor and you've got your speed controller. All right. Now, you're, if most people think if I get a very powerful motor, I need a very high amperage uh, ESC, meaning like a 30 amp, 40 amp, or 60 amp. Now that's not exactly true because, it, again, it depends on your setup. You can get away with a 390 kV motor, which will run uh, a, a six cell setup, okay, which is very high voltage. Um, which is usually seen on the larger quad uh, quadcopters, multi or multi rotors, um, and the reason for that is because you you need that lifting capabilities. Now, it's not always the case. For the higher lifting ca uh, capabilities, yes, you need the high amp ESCs because there's going to be a lot of high amp draw. Now, if your weight is lower then the amp draw is going to be lower and you're never even going to get to, to close to that. I've seen a setup with a 20 amp ESC uh, with a 390 kV 6 cell setup. Okay. Now the reason for that is, is with the larger propellers, okay, um, we've tried 15 inch, 17 inch propellers uh, on, uh, on a quadcopter. Uh, with 390 kV motors and again also the quality of the motors is important, the brands Brands do make a difference, um, not always, but in, in this case, yes. Um, I recommend T-Motors. Um, they are, I think, one of the best ones out there. I've got, a, I've got other ones as well. I've got cheap ones. I've got $10 ones, uh, motors, and I've got expensive, more expensive ones. Like on this one, I've got Hen, uh, Henji Lee. Uh, they're also very good quality, but I think T-Motors are one of the best um, Turnigy, funnily enough, the Hobby King Turnigy ones also have some very good quality ones, um, which uh, we're going to be testing very soon on a uh, concept tricopter design. Um, and when I say concept, the, the frame is pretty much the same. We've done very slight modifications to the frame, but everything else, um, you know, the setup and that, um, I'll talk about that a little bit towards the end of the video. All right, so basically, you want good motors and like I said, 390 kV, they weren't even drawing 20 amps because it was a very light quadcopter. It was about 100, uh, sorry, uh, 1.4 kgs, which is about 2.8 pounds, maybe 3 pounds. Um, so um, what that person was going for is runtime, longer runtime. And with that setup, with 15, if I remember correctly, 15 inch props, uh, 390 kV motors, T motors, um, there's 20 amp ESCs. Um, the ESCs you want to get good re refresh rates. Um, uh, most people go with any of the Simon K software ESCs, or you can get any ESC you like and then just flash it uh, with a Simon K software. Um, it's not a must, but you know some most people uh, like it and go buy that one. Um, so yeah, th that quad uh, quadcopter got over 30 minutes of flight time. Okay, why? Because it was running a um, lower KV motor, larger propellers, and they only need to spin at a very, very slow rate, so they have a much lower draw, so their battery lasts longer. All right. So again, th that was for runtime, and he had an entire, uh, well, not the entire FPV system, but most of the FPV system it was a very light one. Um, 
So that's something you need to consider. Um, ESC usually match to the nth draw that you're going to get, and like I said, it's, that's going to depend on the on what you're going to do with it. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, as far as everything else that's concerned, um, sorry, one more thing is obviously what type of frame are you looking at? Okay, is it a tricopter, quadcopter, hexacopter, octocopter? You know, the more uh, motors you have, the more amp draw. Okay, yes, you're going to have more power, but you're going to have more amp draw. So um, stick with the lowest one you can get away with uh, for the payload that you need. The more arms you get is mainly when you want to have more uh, more payload. Um, finally, I would say stay away from the designs where you have one motor on top and one motor on the bottom, like the Y6 configuration or the uh, X8 uh, configuration where there's eight motors, one on top of each other. The reason for that is that they've been proven to be inefficient. There's a lot of efficiency loss. Uh, between the propeller on top and the bottom, so it's it's actually not not worth it uh, to go with uh, with those ones. Um, now, finally, I want to talk about the Team Black Sheep quad, uh, quadcopter. Great quadcopter, and now it comes the Pro. It's got that camera gimbal in the front, which is also very very nice, very well set up. They're only getting about 12 to 14, I think 12 to 14 minutes uh, on a four cell setup, um, and they might not be in enough for you. It's very compact, yes, but it might not be enough for you. Now, again, I highly recommend it. It's very expensive. There's cheaper versions, um, so again, it's all depending on what you want to do. Um, but I can tell you that uh, very soon, like I said, I was going to talk about this last, is the tricopter design uh, that we're working on. We're working on um, two types of setups, okay? One is basically just to have a fun all-around uh, tricopter um, that will be nice acrobatic. Uh, you can still put a camera on it. Um, it'll be very nice and you can fly it for about, uh, also about 12 minutes. Uh, and the second one is same sort of idea, but more for FPV that will you'll be run for much more extended periods of time. Now, I don't know what that is yet because we're still uh, testing, uh, but we're pushing uh, for 30 minutes to an hour of flight times. And I know that's a big bracket, but um, I know we can do it. So we'll, we'll see where we end up. And um, what we'll do is we'll post uh, the design uh, and the specs and everything online for free. Uh, so you guys can build it yourselves. Uh, there's very small tweaks that we do to it. So if you um, if you um, want to uh, find out those tweaks, then obviously just uh, check us out on YouTube so that we can tell you how to set it up um, so that it will run guaranteed for that flight time. Um, again, when I say guaranteed, it's going to depend on your battery. Uh, and the reason for that is because different batteries uh, also, lifetime of battery, you know, how long you've had it and that. But approximately, it'll give you very, uh, very good flight time ranges. Um, so, subscribe to us. Um, we like the tricopter because uh, it gives us very nice yaw. Um, and we're going to get nice long uh, FPV run times with it. Um, we're going to run the APM 2. Point, well, whatever the latest APM uh, software is, but with the APM and GPS, so we have return to launch, uh, we'll have uh, loiter mode, um, and it'll be a great tricopter to, to play around with. Um, we're going to set it up, like I said, very nicely for FPV. We're going to use some of the um, more expensive equipment uh, from Immersion RC, uh, and we're going to have a setup uh, more for beginners, so it'll be um, a cheaper setup, uh, maybe not for necessarily a long, as long of a range, uh, but it'll be a longer flight time in, say, uh, probably about a three mile uh, range uh, on the cheaper version. On the more on the more expensive setup, um, which you can choose, uh, you can go you know as far as time will allow, and we'll let you know how that goes. Um, and keep you posted. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, see you guys next time. Ciao.